not going to an antique shop, although I might stop at one. What I'm doing is doing some research. You know, I've talked about sharpening saws multiple times. And I've also talked about wanting to set up a business to sharpen saws. Well, I've actually done that. Now, if you go to Galesburg and stop at Burgess Antiques, you can fill out a card, attach it to your saw, and Old Sneelock will sharpen your saw for you. Because I'm doing that, I decided I needed to get a reliable source of files. Now, I've got a huge supply of files already, but when you're filing saws, you really want to have good files. A dull file will sharpen the saw. It's going to basically do the same thing, but it's going to take a lot more work. And since I hope to be sharpening at least one or two a day, I don't want to spend hours doing something that I could be doing in minutes. So my goal is to find a local source. There's the rug. A local source where I could buy three-cornered files for sharpening saws. Now, so far today, I've gone to my local hardware store. They had one. It was a Slim Taper Nicholson file. Nicholson files are not the best. Actually, they're right down there at the bottom. But that's what they had. And since they're a local source, I always like to go to my hometown first. You know, they're the people that live with me in the town and they pay the taxes just like I do and support the same things that I do. So I'd rather put the money at close to home. But I'm running a business. So running a business means you have to be aware of the bottom line. Being aware of the bottom line doesn't mean that you're foolish with your money. Uh, it means that you're cautious with your money. So I want to make sure that I'm getting the best possible deal. In the light of that, I went to the local Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply is owned by somebody who lives in the area and they're a franchisee. And it's not just one big huge corporate that uh, does everything. It's, it's a local guy that's making the money. So it's not the same thing, but it's close. The difference was, at my local hardware store, it was $7.99 to buy a Nicholson Slim Taper 6-inch file. The same file at Tractor Supply was $4.99. Well, that's a significant difference. The issue then becomes, how long will a Nicholson file last? I'm going to be doing a time study and uh, capability study of the Nicholson files because I'm an engineer, it's what I do. I want to see just how long those Nicholson files are going to work. Well, I had to do some errands in town, so I stopped at the local Menard store. They don't have Nicholson, they have Stanley. Stanley, I don't have a whole lot of input on. Uh, the new Stanley, I'm not impressed with. The company that bought Stanley is making some changes and maybe they're going to get better who knows but right now my review is being withheld I'm, I'm going to hold on and, and find out just how long they last I'm also taking a, a kind of a flyer and I'm going on a trip down to Schoolcraft which I'm just pulling into town now in Schoolcraft there's a place called B&G Salvage they sell stuff that is uh, closeouts. It's things that the company went out of business, uh, it was left on the dock, or it was something that they could get really cheaply from China or some other manufacturer. So they have very low prices. They also have quality, which is commensurate with the low prices. But if I'm really going to do a study, I've got to understand exactly what those different companies are doing. And it does make a difference, if not to the bottom line, it does to my satisfaction. I want to buy tools that work, I want to buy tools that do a good job, and I want to buy tools that are something that I can count on.
So I'm going to stop in at B&G Salvage and see what they've got, and we'll talk about it in a few minutes. Well, B&G Salvage was pretty much a bust. The few files that they had, which you can see here, uh, really aren't worth the trouble of picking them up. I'm not going to test something that fails right out of the blister pack. Now, I've heard good things about a company called Grobe. Uh, never bought anything from them. They're more of an online source and I'm really trying to not find an online source. But if that's the only option that I have, I might end up going there. All depends on how the Stanley works out and how the two Nicholsons work out. And that's gonna be found out later because I have three saws on the bench to sharpen. is in pretty rough shape. I think I'm going to swing over from Schoolcraft and go through Vicksburg and head on home. This section of 131 is horrible. But right now it's 356 according to the clock on the dashboard and I need to be home about 430. So that's a half hour run. I turn here and go through Vicksburg. I think I might cut off a little time on that, but it's still going to be pretty much driving to get there. I did manage to stop off at two antique stores while I was in Schoolcraft. That used to be a major business in Schoolcraft, but now it's falling on hard times. There's only two, and they're struggling. Hopefully, with more money coming through, there'll be more traffic going through town because 131 is a main drag if you're going to be going uh, anywhere south out of Michigan. Uh, there's a lot of little towns going down that way in Indiana. So I can hope that business is going to pick up. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching. One day of 41 degrees. Now, I can still see my breath out here, but I'm standing in the shade. But you can see that the sun has really done a number on the snow. Where it was a foot deep, it's now down to about 10 inches in the sun. In the shade, still got a lot of snow. But the picnic bench peeled off a lot of the snow off of it. Sadie's having fun. She's out running around behind the barns looking for squirrel scent. <whistles> Sadie! Squirrel! Squirrel! Yeah, it still works. 